So one of the things that a lot of my students have emailed me about on my website and in my programs is that they are improvising, either they're playing along with backing tracks or jamming with a band, and when they play their solos and they finish a lick, a lot of the times they feel like they're ending on wrong notes to them or they're not quite landing how they would like in the musical phrase. So in this video, I wanna talk about playing over a blues in the key of G and give you just some simple landing points that you can use in your solos. All right, so let's get straight into it. Now, if we're playing a blues in the key of G, typically we're gonna have just three chords as our essential blues pattern. And those chords are gonna be a G, a C, and a D. Now, in the blues, a lot of times those chords are all played as sevenths. So that's going to be a G7, a C7, and a D7. Now, each one of those chords is actually made up of four notes. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at those exact four notes for each chord, and we're going to stay in just one position here. We're going to stay based around this third fret here, and this idea can actually be worked out all over the entire guitar neck. So that's a long-term sort of vision for this, but in this video, we're going to focus on just this one area. So let's start with the G chord. Now the G chord, or the G7, its full name, is going to have the notes G, B, D, and F. Okay, so let me show you a great way of outlining those notes here. We're going to start on the third fret of the low E string, and then we'll go to the second fret on the A string, then the fifth fret on the A string, then go to the third fret on the fourth string, and then fifth fret. So that's actually one octave there. We've got the notes G, B, D, F, G. So it's straight up the arpeggio, basically, which is breaking up the chord. Then we'll continue with this pattern. We'll go G, B, D, F, G. So what I played there was starting on that G, I went to the third string, fourth fret, second string, third fret, up to the sixth fret, and then ending there on the third fret of the first string. And that is the same note as this, G, just two octaves up. So that's the first arpeggio, and I'm gonna take you through the four chord and the five chord, but before we get into that, I wanna give you a gift that's really gonna help you out for putting this together on the neck, and it's my fretboard guide. And this guide shows you the five must-know chords and scales for mapping out the entire fretboard. So one of the things when it comes to soloing is a lot of players may learn scales or learn arpeggios, but they don't tie them to chord shapes. And so that's one of the things that I'll show you in this PDF. It's gonna be one of the most useful guides you'll see for learning the neck. And I wanna give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide, or I made it easy for you. Just click that first link down below and you can download that as my gift to you. Again, it's really gonna help you out for your blues solos. Okay, so if I back up here, this would be the entire G7 arpeggio. Now, any one of those notes, if you stop on them, they will sound good over a G7. So you want to practice knowing where those notes are on your guitar and then also just playing this in eighth notes, ascending and descending. So that's our one chord. Now from there, we're going to look at what I call the four chord or the C7 chord here in the key of G. For that, we're going to start on the third fret as well. And we're gonna go three, six, then go to the fifth string, and go three, then the fourth string, two, five, 
third string, three, five, second string, just five, and then the first string, three, six. Okay, so slowly. Now in a C7 chord, the notes are gonna be C, E, G, and then B flat. So check this out, this would be G, B flat, C, E, G, B flat, C, E, G, B flat. So it's all just those same notes worked out in this area of the guitar. So practice that going up and then coming back down. Now the final chord we're gonna look at is the D7. Now that's gonna be our five chord. And in that chord, we have the notes D, F sharp, A, and C. Now for this pattern, we're gonna start on the second fret of the low E, and we're gonna play two, five, then go to the fifth string, three, five. Then we'll go to the fourth string, four. Third string, two, five. Second string, three first string two five okay so the notes here go f sharp a c d f sharp a c d f sharp a so again you can see we're using those notes d f sharp a and c but working them out all in this same position so that gives you all three chords of the blues, the one, four, and the five mapped out there. Here it is one more time just to review. G7. Then we have C7, our four chord. And then the five chord, D7. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate just a simple solo over a G blues and I'm just gonna be moving from one chord to the next and as the chords change, I'm gonna be hitting the notes of each chord that's happening. I'm just gonna try and as I mentioned, land on those target notes because those notes will always work because they're notes in the chord. So here's an example of that. A one, two, three. So that entire solo basically just used those patterns and I kind of weaved in between the chords. So as the chords change, I go to the notes in the arpeggio for each chord. So practice those arpeggio patterns and then see if you can use those notes again as landing notes. This is gonna fix that problem of resolving where you may feel like you're playing a solo and then you land on a note that sounds out. You've gotta make sure you're hitting those notes in the arpeggios and landing on a chord tone. So hope you got some value out of this video. To help you put this together even more, be sure to grab my fretboard guide. This is gonna show you how I map this stuff out on the entire guitar neck. And it's great for blues, but it actually really works for any style. So just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide and grab that as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and for more blues soloing lessons, check out this video next.